Hi everyone, welcome back to Wesno's Tech News and Reviews. Today we'll be reviewing, testing and comparing the Fitbit Inspire 2 versus the Samsung Galaxy Fit 2. Now there are plenty of reviews and comparisons out there, but they're all looking at the specs. Well, we know the specs because these trackers have been around for the last four to five months. But what about accuracy? How do they perform in real life? That's what we're going to be looking at today. So we're going to kick off with the heart rate accuracy test from my run in the forest. The benchmark for the heart rate test will be done by Polar H10 ECG chest strap. Then we're going to be talking about the resting heart rate during the night and then sleep accuracy. Let's get into it. If you are new to Wesno's tech news and reviews, we talk about the latest tech news. We do brutally honest reviews and share hacks and tricks along the way. Before we get into the testing and comparing of the two trackers, let's have a quick recap of what these two trackers are all about. So on my right hand, I've got the Samsung Galaxy Fit 2. On my left, I've got the Fitbit Inspire 2. Now, if we start off with the Samsung, so we'll go through the positives and the negatives. Now, in regards to the negatives, the clasp, clip and tuck clasp, shocking. You just, there's no way of getting it off easily nor on quickly. It's just, yeah. In regards to the positives, well, it's the usual tracker, right? You've got a big black face. The screen is actually AMOLED. Uh, it's very bright. It's 1.1 inches, so just the traditional tracker. It's real easy to use. Another big positive here is the price. 49 pounds or 49 dollars. In fact, I can see them on Amazon, usually discounted heavily, so you can pick it up as low as 30 bucks or 30 quid. Let's get on to the Inspire 2 now. So with the Inspire 2, the positives, the positive is the clasp. It's the classic watch type clasp. So you can get this on easily, quickly, on, off, anytime. In regards to the negatives, well, in my case, I think it's the tiny screen. Big black face, tiny black and white screen. So it is AMOLED, but it's tiny. We can't go around this. I couldn't find the size anywhere, but I think it's probably like a 0.5 or 0.6 of an inch. It's absolutely minuscule. There is no way you're going to read any kind of text on here while you're exercising. It's just too small. You need to pull out your phone and actually look into the app. Another negative with the Fitbit Inspire 2, in my view, is that it does cost quite a bit of money. So either 89 pounds or 100 bucks now you also get them discounted but you're not going to get them as cheap as the Samsung so really we've got two trackers 50 bucks 100 bucks now is the Fitbit Inspire twice as good as the Samsung Galaxy Fit 2 the Fitbit Inspire 2 is saying that we have a lot of premium features but can you please let me know in the comments do you actually go in and actually use Fitbit premium features like coaching and so forth because I don't the only thing I really use the trackers for is to track my sleep uh, heart rate and if they have it's an SPO2 monitor but these ones don't have SPO2 so it's just the heart rate and sleep metrics that's what's key and I think these are the functions that are most commonly used on fitness trackers so really if you're going to be splashing at a hundred bucks would you get a Fitbit Inspire 2 or maybe a budget smartwatch. I don't know, just a question. I want to know what you think of that in the comments. Right, so I think we're ready to dive in and actually have a look at the test. We're going to be kicking off with heart rate. So I went for a run on Sunday in the forest. Um, so it was a bit of uphill, downhill, all over the show. So we're going to be plotting the heart rate from the optical heart rate sensors on the back of these trackers versus the Polar H10 uh, ECG chest strap. That is going to be our benchmark and these ones will be plotted against it. We're going to be starting off with the Samsung Galaxy Fit 2 and then we'll jump on the Fitbit Inspire 2. Let's get into it. So now we have the Galaxy Fit 2 heart rate plot over the Polar H10 ECG chest straps plot. And we can see that the average heart rate registered by Polar H10 was 143 beats per minute. Galaxy Fit 2 registers 141. So there's a variance of 2 beats per minute or negative 1.4%. 
it does look like the Galaxy Fit 2 doesn't really register the peaks nor the trolls, but rather averages in across the tracing. So this is especially evident in the first half of the run. Later on, it does sort of trace the Polar H10 heart rate. But at the start, definitely. The peaks are understated and the trolls are overstated. If we look at the max heart rate, so the Polar H10 registers 160 beats per minute, while the Galaxy Fit 2 actually has 161. So again, a variance of one beat per minute, but really, that is the peak and that is still very good that's a variance of 0.6 percent so the average heart rate variance is 1.4 percent while for the max heart rate there is a variance of 0.6 percent those results are actually very good the only worry i have is that there is a lot of averaging in because we can see that for the first half of the run so if we look at the first 15 minutes there are quite a lot of points where the peaks are just not registered, the trolls are not followed through, that's a bit of a worry. But the averaging in, but the averaging in has allowed the Galaxy Fit 2 to be very close to the ECG chest strap. Let's take a look at the Fitbit Inspire 2. The Fitbit Inspire 2 does look like it's doing a bit more tracing than the Galaxy Fit 2. So it's actually quite close to the Polar H10 chest strap. Yes, there is a bit of a lag and we can see that basically from the start in the first rise up as the intensity of the run increases, we can see the heart rate jumping up, but it is lagging behind the chest strap. As we get to the middle of the run where we see most of the peaks, this was where I was running uphill, we do see that the peaks are sort of matched, but then the actual decrease of the heart rate is lagging so that means that the optical heart rate sensor is slightly slower to register the heart rate signals than the chest strap as we look into the second part of the plot we can see that the tracing is rather good and the fitbit inspired 2 is actually following the polar h10 strap quite closely let's look at the variance so for the average heart rate there is a variance of three beats per minute so if the polar h10 has 143 beats per minute the inspire 2 registers 140 that's a variance of 2.1 percent the fitbit inspire 2 is also off from the max heart rate by two beats per minute and that's a variance of 1.3 percent so if we compare the results between the Fitbit Inspire 2 and the Galaxy Fit 2, if we don't look at the plots, we just look at the numbers, then it looks like the Galaxy Fit 2 actually did a better job. But if we actually focus on the plots, then we can see that there's a lot of averaging and a lot of smoothing out done by Galaxy Fit 2, which I'm not very fond of. So it sort of played the game now in this particular case in a short run. But what if the run was much longer, let's say 10K, 15K, then I think that all of this smoothing would not do you a whole world of good. Now, the Fitbit Inspire 2 does seem to have a bit of a lag in its optical heart rate sensor, but it's definitely doing a much better job at actually tracing the real heart rate. At the end of the day, the variances are tiny from both the trackers. I think they've done a good job. What we can say definitely is that the Fitbit Inspire 2 and the Galaxy Fit 2 do actually have quite accurate heart rate sensors. Just before we get into the sleep accuracy test and analysis, let's take a look at the resting heart rate. This is quite an important metric because this is the heart rate while you're at rest, while you're sleeping. And this is actually an indicator of your uh, general well-being as well as the state of your nervous system. Because it's actually one of the inputs to the heart rate variability calculation or metric. So the Samsung Galaxy Fit 2 measured 65 beats per minute as the resting heart rate, while the Fitbit Inspire 2 came up with 66. Now this is in line with my general trends of overnight or resting heart rate, so no issues there. And we can go on to the sleep accuracy test. So to start us off, let's take a look at the falling asleep time as well as the wake up time. So I went to sleep at around 2.30 a.m. and we can see that both trackers actually registered just that. We can see that both trackers actually registered a falling asleep time of 2.29 a.m. 
Now the Fitbit Inspire 2 registered me waking up at 10.32 a.m. while the Galaxy Fit 2 registered me waking up at 10.29 a.m. Either way, three minutes here, three minutes there, that's still very close to the 10.30 a.m. that my alarm clock went off on. So no issues there. Now let's take a look at the actual sleep stages. So if we look at the deep and the light sleep, the total times are quite similar across the two trackers, with around four to five hours registered for the light sleep and about one and a half to two hours on the deep sleep. There is no issue with that, that makes sense, because over the night we do expect to have sleep cycles which are at least 70 minutes. So that all makes sense. What doesn't make sense is the awake times. From 2.30 a.m. till 10 30 a.m. there is eight hours that's the total time slept but if we actually look at this Samsung Galaxy Fit 2 registered a sleeping time of seven hours and five minutes while the Fitbit Inspire 2 is saying seven hours and 11 minutes so where did those 50 minutes go and it looks like both of these trackers are very sensitive to movement and the Fitbit Inspire 2 is telling us that I was awake for 52 minutes. So in my eight hours of sleeping, apparently I woke up 52 minutes long. Now, that's a lot of waking up during the night. I don't think that's the case. Now Galaxy Fit 2 is telling me that I was awake for 40 minutes. That's also quite a bit. Now what this actually means is that these trackers are actually dependent on your movement to identify your sleep stages. As a result of this overestimation of the awake times, the total slept time is actually reduced and hence the sleep scores provided to us are most likely slightly off and underestimating our real quality of sleep. So I think this is an issue and that would mean that these trackers are actually over dependent on movement during the night rather than other variables such as your breathing rate, such as your heart rate and so forth. Either way, I think both of these trackers have shown that they are on par in regards to actual tracking your heart rate, your resting heart rate. If you found this review, comparison and test useful, then drop us a like. And if you want to see more of the same, then please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.